In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Very warm welcome to Mass, welcome to Shea, welcome to everyone else who's joining virtually. Uh, and it's very good to have you with us. Um, and we're beginning now um, to think about how to open the church for private prayer, although uh, that probably, well, it certainly won't be on Monday. Uh, and we're talking about it as a DCC on Tuesday, so please bear with us as we work out how to do that safely. And then in due course, of course, we hope to open perhaps as early as next month uh, for public worship, although with very limited numbers. But bear with us and wait to hear from us. We'll let you know as soon as we have anything else to say on that. And today I welcome our guest preacher, not here in person, uh, but uh, Duncan Dormer, who's the Chief Executive and General Secretary of USPG, the Mission Agency, has recorded a sermon for us this morning, and we look forward to hearing what he has to say to us. But for now, we keep a moment of quiet as we recall our sins and prepare to come to the throne of the heavenly grace, confident in his love, forgiveness and mercy towards us. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, Father we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, for our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you Take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, for you alone. strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ your Son our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen.
first reading today is from Exodus, chapter 19, verses 2 to 8. The Israelites had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you obey my voice, and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all of the people. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and set off before and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, Everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to today's psalm is, The Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting. The Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting. Psalm 100. Oh, be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. The Lord is gracious. His steadfast love is everlasting. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless, bless his name. For the Lord is gracious. His steadfast love is everlasting. And his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. The Lord is gracious. His steadfast love is everlasting. Second reading is from Romans 5, 1 to 8. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to, to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope to share in the glory of God. But not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely anyone will die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St Matthew. Glory and to you, you O Lord. Lord. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, 
and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples, and gave them authority over unclean spirits, to cast them out, and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You receive without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for labourers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy, and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me, as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say. For what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. And children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, Flee to the next, for truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you and Christ. Christ. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out his labourers into his harvest. Between the words that are spoken and the words that are heard, may God's Holy Spirit whisper into the depths of our hearts. Amen. Warm greetings to you from my home in South London as we gather for worship remotely online from our own homes. In this season of Pentecost, when we reflect on our Lord's call to go out into the harvest, to pray for the Spirit, to inspire us as Christian community, that we might be the labourers to bring renewed and renewing life to God's world. As we begin to emerge
blinking into the light as lockdown eases. So we have been confronted once again with the brutal realities of racial injustice and violence. And by those words that speak so powerfully to each one of us at a deeply human level, I can't breathe. Words that also remind us that in our current context of COVID-19, the reality is that some groups of people have suffered considerably more than others. Injustice has a structural and systematic element. With the killing of George Floyd, the protection and justice that the law is supposed to bring was cruelly denied and abused again. And inevitably, righteous anger is expressed in gatherings and protests across the world. And so in the midst of the COVID pandemic, our attention has been drawn to another deeper, more persistent pandemic, that of racism. And that justice is not experienced in the same way by people of different ethnicities, classes or backgrounds. And that injustice has been there in the midst of the COVID-19 crisis. Across the world, over the last few months, some of our Anglican sisters and brothers have suffered severe food shortages or a complete collapse in livelihoods with nothing to fall back on. Others, for example, especially the poor and indigenous groups in Brazil or the Philippines, have suffered abuse or worse at the hands of military or police forces during this time. Our gospel reading paints a picture of a crowd of people, a crowd of needy people, harassed and helpless, leaderless, crying out for support, spiritual, pastoral, practical. And as we read, Jesus had compassion on them. The Greek is perhaps better translated as Jesus was filled with tenderness. This is the very heart of Jesus' ministry, that tender love that God in Christ has for his people. For most of us, crowds of people make us anxious, whether their cry is for justice or bread. We recoil from their neediness. We're fearful that we will be overwhelmed. But Jesus sees something very different. Where others see brokenness, helplessness, a source of despair. He sees beyond to a glorious harvest. He sees the renewed and renewing life of God in those he loves, his people. He sees transformation. And of course, in today's reading, he calls his disciples and us to join in with him in that transformation, in reaching out to others. On hearing these words, this call to mission, to a glorious harvest, the challenge to be one of those few labourers, today we may be tempted to think, that's all very well, but the timing's not great. We need to wait. It's too soon. We need to recover, straighten things out. And then when we're sorted, we can begin to think of reaching out to others. And that's very natural. The current pandemic is, of course, a unique and extreme crisis. But for many churches across God's world, it is another extreme crisis. Accustomed to precariousness and vulnerability, the churches in many societies are still so often the communities of resilience and hope, who reach out, who inspire confidence and build morale, 
helping others to realize their own capacity to repair, rebuild, reconstruct their buildings, their lives, their communities, perhaps after a tsunami or a hurricane. And in this, they are often helped by expressions of solidarity and support from within the wider global Anglican family. One of these extreme crises has been the HIV AIDS epidemic, which has killed 15 million people in sub-Saharan Africa and had a devastating impact on the economy. HIV AIDS frightens people. And unsurprisingly, one of the ongoing legacies of the pandemic is stigma with those who are HIV positive, even those who are healthy and receiving treatment, being shunned and stigmatized. Linda, a woman in the Diocese of Harare, Zimbabwe, describes her experience as follows. I am a 40 year old HIV positive single mother. I was sidelined by my community and my four children were mocked at school. I felt so much shame and suffering that I contemplated suicide. Recognizing this in 2015, the Anglican Church in Zimbabwe launched an HIV AIDS stigma reduction program. And last year in my capacity as the General Secretary of the United Society Partners in the Gospel, USPG, I had the immense privilege of meeting with some of those involved in this important work. To succeed, the church has had to work with a wide range of groups, traditional healers, village chiefs, hospitals, schools, other churches, the government of Robert Mugabe and his successor, and in partnership with USPG. The work has involved priests and bishops talking about sexual relationships and practices. It has involved the training of lay people, often grandmothers, to talk to teenagers within their communities about all aspects of HIV AIDS. It has taken imagination and courage and resolve and commitment on the part of individuals and the church as a community. The message is simple. It's about living positively, living positively with the diagnosis, but living positively with each other, affirming and accepting and including all. This initiative of the church is not simply about health. It's about self-esteem, belonging, what it means to be human, what it means to be family, community and it has taken the church onto the streets into the marketplaces and a whole host of different spaces and gatherings and the labor of such mission has involved as it so often does much singing and dancing it has been a labor of joy as well as perseverance it is holistic mission transformative, renewing of the whole person and the whole community, bringing a harvest of inclusive justice. Local mission in the spirit of Jesus, gazing on that crowd, helpless and harassed. It does what the most effective sort of Christian mission does. It addresses the deep heartache of the people. Christ-like mission, local and global, begins with that tender heart, with the eye of compassion that really looks out on the world and really pays attention and sees, sees the potential in others in the midst of their pain and anxiety and loss in the midst of injustice and violence and suffering. 
yet it breathes it all in and through the Spirit seeks to breathe out hope, creativity and encouragement. But it also requires courage and commitment to take those first steps for things to happen. But when it does, the transformation is great. The harvest plentiful. The Anglican Church in Zimbabwe faces many, many challenges. Yet it lives and breathes resilience and hope. And in the midst of all, strives for a justice for all. And so Linda did not follow through with her suicidal feelings. Instead, her life was changed by the stigma reduction program of the church in Zimbabwe. In her words, it changed everything. I declared my HIV status in church. I was fully accepted and indeed elected to be church warden. Now I encourage others to disclose their status. It is no different for any of us. We too are called to look with tenderness on our world, to stand in solidarity with our sisters and brothers who face extreme challenges as they reach out in mission to others or who face prejudice and violence but also to look with tenderness on our own local communities, to serve those around us pastorally, practically, but also to cry out for an inclusive justice, a justice for all, for a world that has no need of food banks. To create a world where campaigns like Black Lives Matter are no longer required. For a world where there are no homeless charities, that all may breathe freely and take their place, perhaps near the centre of our communities. Thank you to Father Duncan for recording that sermon for us this morning, a lot for us to think about. Uh, and also, if you're interested in USPG's work, do please look them up. I'm a trustee and what they do is really vital all the world over. We now join in proclaiming our shared faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not of him, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, to us and to our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Father, we give you thanks for the church. In this 
place and throughout the world. We pray for our church wardens here, Sonia and Sandy, Reverend Margaret, our leader Alice, for our GCC as we prepare to discuss how we can open the church again on Tuesday. We pray for our bishops, Christopher and Caraway, and our Archbishop Preston. We pray for our Zimbabwean brothers and sisters, for all of those involved in the stigma reduction programme there, for Father Fritz, the Dean of Little Wayne, for Bishop Cleopas of Nakabilan, and for all the priests and people of your church in that country. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all of those who are suffering from HIV AIDS and for those who live with it day by day. We pray for all of those doing research into HIV AIDS. One day the virus may cease. And we pray with HIV AIDS may not be stigmatised by the communities in which they live. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Continue to pray for an end to the racism which ravages our world. We pray for all of those who suffer and have suffered racist abuse. We pray for those who perpetrate it, that they might have their eyes opened. And we pray for all of us, that any shadow of seeing our brothers and sisters of different races differently, and as not fully the same as us as human beings, might be wiped away one and recognise the face of Jesus Christ in all of our brothers and sisters. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the government in this land. Pray for Her Majesty the Queen following her official birthday yesterday. She might continue to be an example of service to us. Minister and all the ministers of the crown. Pray for wisdom for them as they continue to guide our country through the easing of lockdown and the consequences of the coronavirus. And we pray for leaders of all nations. They might serve their people with both justice mercy, and that they might always have a concern for those who are weakest and with the least in their societies. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick in body, mind or spirit. We pray for those in our own community who are not known to us, but are in need of our prayers. We pray by name for Lane, Sheila, Ellie, Martin, Melissa, Veronica, Mamie, Ian, Josephine, Josie, Mel, Tanya, Stephen, Josephine, Mother Sheridan, Rita and Julian. them in their sickness. Support them in what they are undergoing. Lift them up through healing and wholeness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died in the faith of Christ and those whose faith is known to be alone. Praying particularly for Avril, whose funeral was yesterday. Eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and their life perpetually shine upon them. May they rest in peace. And 
bright and glorious. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We join our early prayers with those of our Lady Queen of Heaven, St John Baptist, St Mark, St Luke, St Barnabas and all the saints, as we so merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Christ is our peace, he has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And if we are with others at this time, let us offer one another a sign of that peace. Peace be with you. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks 
to the Lord our God. This is why to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word to whom you have created all things. You are sent for you in your great goodness to be your Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh, as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us, and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, as I the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness, granted by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will. These gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so far we're calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Mary, the mother of the Lord, St. John Baptist, St. Mark, St. Luke, St. Barnabas, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we thank you for nourishing us with these heavenly gifts. May our communion strengthen us in faith, 
Build us up in hope and make us grow in love. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. And just to say for the blessing, as I said at the start, uh, may we allow by law to open from tomorrow for private prayer. Uh, we shan't be doing that straight away here because we're working out how to do that safely. Uh, for example, um, we're supposed to have a deep clean, I think, after each time the church is open. Clearly, uh, that's not straightforward to organise as well as uh, various other things. Bear with us and we'll let you know uh, once we've worked out how to do that safely, as I say. Uh, also, to add, next week we have another guest preacher, we have Mother May Christie from All Saints Tooting. Uh, it'll be very good to have uh, Mother May with us. And the following week we have the Bishop here for our Patronal Festival. And Mother May is joining virtually, will be uh, playing a recording of her sermon, but the Bishop will be here in person. Uh, so I'm sure we'll look forward to welcoming him. Uh, we'll certainly look forward to welcoming him on your behalf. And I hope that you do to welcome him virtually as well. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and those whom you love, this day and evermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.